All right, I'm on blue. Geography. Blue. Name the five great lakes. Michigan, Superior, Ontario, Erie, and Huron. No, Spiro Agnew. What? Bruce, you're reading the wrong one. He invented the electric razor. Hi, how are you? I'm Sid. I'm the band's manager. What band? Salivating tomato seeds. You know, the one you guys hired to do Yamo? What? We're the opening band. So where do we play? Here. Here? Haven't you got a set for us? You must be joking. Do you know how huge the Yamo set is? Well, do you? It's huge. It's huge. You mean you got nothing for the band? Look, we can't build you anything, but maybe we could bring some stuff out. We do have some scenery left over from our musical adaptation of Red Badge of Courage. Well, get something. Well, what do you want? What do I want? I want lights, sets, amplifiers, fog, chicken. Hey, how much time we got? <laughs> Okay, page two explains how to turn it on. Pages three through 373 explain how to turn it off. Good luck. What do you think? You're from our chat version of Death of a Salesman. Get it out of here. Oh man, I got the chicken. I got the chicken. That is a rubber chicken. I want a live chicken. Get it out of here. Oh wow, niche. Does anybody know anything about fog machines? Suki, your act is broken. Aw, oh, does this mean we're doing more ballads? Nothing more than feelings. It's coming, it's coming. How long have we got? Three minutes, stop. Who turned on the fog machine? Wasn't I supposed to? You broke the switch. Aw, oh, damn. Snake, you broke my amp. I thought we were friends. Lay off, Silky. I'm really stressed out right now. Is this what you want? No, you simpleton. But it's my mom's recipe. We use this to a low dummy version of Macbeth. No, no, no. I want something punky. The fuck's getting kind of bad backstage. Is that the chicken? What? You want a crispy? I want a live chicken! <laughs>
about something, right? This girl, ooh, this girl, man, I'm telling you, she was. <laughs> the Beatles. The Rolling Stones. The Salivating Tomato Seeds. Now, all of these are great artists and obviously great influences on their time, but who are their influences? Well, one man stands out. Born Robert J. Cradell, Mr. Bobby Starlight ranks among the greats. Where do you begin with a legend like Starlight? I think you begin at the beginning. Bobby like as a child? Well, he was young. All right, Bobby. Let's see what you've learned after your first day of piano lessons. That's a good idea. Go ahead, son. Okay, Dad. Bobby, your slurring was horrendous. Uh, yeah, I agree, son. Sorry. As the years went by, Bobby grew both physically and musically. Bobby embraced new types of music. Yo, get a woman! That was great, I'm speechless, really. I don't know what to say, how to get you a gig, really. Mel, Vera, let me get this kid a gig. Well, I don't know. Vera, what do you think? Well, I'm not sure. Is he mature enough for a gig? Man to man, Al. Do you think he's ready for the responsibility of a gig? Man to man, Mel? I think he's ready. Well, well hell, Al. Let's get him a gig. All right, I'm going to get you a gig. I still think your slurring was horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby's first gig took place at a club called The Naked Oxwich. It was, as they say, a trip. Before. Do you think I intimidated them? No, no, Bobby, I don't think that's the case. See, you're, you're really kind of, uh, you're, you're missing something. It's, it's the blues. Go south, young man. <laughs> Bobby hopped on the next great album bus. So. <laughs> Expecting to find the blues <laughs> immediately. He was amazed as he found it merely a few steps from the Starlight Motel. Excuse me, sir. Yeah? Have you seen the blues? <laughs> You're looking for the blues? Yeah. You came down south on a Greyhound bus with the last year money looking for the blues. <laughs> How'd you know? Lucky guess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, seriously, son. It's the story of the blues. The blues, yeah. That's what I hoped. You know who I am? No, should I? You should if you want to know the blues. My name is Interstate Brickface. Here's my card. 
I'm the king of the no-string guitar. Want to touch it? Bet you do. <laughs> Can you teach me the blues? You're interested? Yeah. Hold this. Can I offer you some literature? Your woman done left you. 15 interesting ways to evoke emotion. <laughs> Feeling down, hearted. Capitalize. So, you want to learn the blues. Here, these help me. They can help you. Uh, gee, thanks. Hey, son, what's your name? Robert Crabapple. <laughs> that ain't no kind of blues man's name. Sounds like a sissy name. You ought to get another. Well, what do you suggest, Mr. Uh, Brickface? Hmm. Starlight. Bobby Starlight. Now that's a blues man's name. Yeah, I like that. Bobby's project, sparked what may have been the most productive period of his career. At the drop of a hat, he could write a song. Bobby owned a lot of hats, and yet none of them really seemed to fit. And so, song by song, Bobby gave away the music that critics and fans would later consider his classics. Art. 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 <laughs> Sure, I knew Bobby. He wrote us a tune while we were in uh, New York. Don't start with me, Art. <laughs> he told me he'd written it about Smokey Robinson's mother. She baked him a loaf of bread once. <laughs> uh, I'd beg Bobby to join me. I didn't want to sing with Art. Sorry, Art. <laughs> Simon and Starlight. It would have been beautiful. Bobby had the three qualities I look for in a man. He was beautiful, he was talented, and I could beat him up. And gosh, could he write songs? My agent sent me one. It went like. They say we're young and we don't know. But instead, I got Sonny. What a letdown. No, no. Bobby never wrote me a song. But I was always intrigued by his intense sexuality. The gratuitous display of raw desire thrusting his love in the eyes of America, gyrating and twisting like a possum in heat. Oh, yes! It interested me. <laughs> At this point, Bobby was faced with the career decision of a lifetime. He had sent a song, in his opinion one of his best, to another group. They loved the song. In fact, they wanted Bobby to join. Bad. I bet you're wondering where I am, aren't you? Hey, Alex, you gotta call on line five. All right, Martha, hold my calls. You know what this one means to me. Gotcha. Hey, hell, Ed. We've been here since 9 o'clock. When are you going to let us sing our song? The Del Montes are a nothing group. You are the Del Montes. Hence, you are nothing. Now be quiet and let me use the phone. They introduce yourselves to Bobby or something. Not this. I'm Tony. And I'm Phil. We're, We're the, the Del Montes. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hi. He's got the boys there with him. And, and? Well, quite honestly, they loved it. They loved it. Tell them how much you loved it, guys. I loved it. Let's show them how much we loved it. A one, two, three, four. Listen, Hal, I want Bobby to join the Bee Gees. The Who Gees? The Bee Gees. The Bee Gees? The Bee Gees. The Bee Gees. The Bee Gees. It's true, Bobby. They want you to be the fourth Bee Gee. What do you say? What is no thank you? 
That's correct, Bobby, but honestly, I'm disappointed. Mark, we're gonna have to take a rain check on that. What? Martha, send in that new kid. What's his name? Uh, Eddie Murphy. Maybe he'll want to be a BG. All right. We've had enough. We're singing now. Reggae boys, let's get em. A one, a two, a y'all know what to do. Cream cheese, cream cheese, cream cheese, cream cream. My love is like a needle. My love is like a rock. And if you don't know what to do, Why, certainly. 
Thank you. Can I get you anything else? No, that'd be all. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, like I was saying, Neil, I was never popped in the public eye, but I got respect. I kept my dignity, and I'm well liked. And plus, <laughs> I've got more money than you ever believe. <laughs> yeah, but Bobby, what does it all mean? <clears throat> well, Neil, I've learned to live by this motto. The shoe fits by two pairs. Bobby, you've had a wonderful life. It's true, it's true. But, well, what was your finest hour? Well, it would have to be on that rainy night in Topeka, where me and some old friends of mine were performing one of my songs, the local fairgrounds. Birthday party. 
<laughs> and now, stay tuned for the conclusion of The Trouble with Turning Ten. Okay, everyone, come over and get a party hat. Leave a gift for all of these feet. No gift, no hat. <laughs> Don and Jessica, Laura, Hillary, come on. Hey, Don, I heard you and Laura were eating lunch together yesterday. Yeah, so? Well, don't you know about girls? What about them? Thanks, Hillary. I wrapped this just for you. Thanks, Hillary. Ah, ah, Mom, get some soap. Hillary kissed me. Look. Hillary, get your red hair next. You know, Laura, word's going around the playground that you've been seeing a lot of Don. Well, we just need lunch together. Well, word sure travels fast. So are you going to let him kiss you? Ew! Oh, let me get the phone. Hello? Come on, Ogilvy, let me come over. No way. Fine, this means drastic measures. Nah, your mom's a drastic measure. Oh, wait! Is that Ernest? Yeah. Hello, Ernest? Yes? Is your brother there? We forgot to invite him to the party. No, he's out skating. All right, fine. fine. I'd like to come. Yeah, that car's to be here any minute, kid. Stand up, look excited. Anyway. 
This has been the worst birthday party ever. Yeah, it does kind of suck. <laughs> but kid, now that you're 10, you have to learn three things. One, there is no Santa Claus. But two, women are nothing but trouble. And three, Elvis lives. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. Go have some punch. Time for my favorite party game. Can it tail the donkey? No. Strip poker? Yeah. No, spin the bottle. Yeah. yeah. All right, I go first. Oh, well, here you go. This one's dead. <laughs> You're getting your birthday present whether you like it or not. Fine. Fine. Oh, sweet! Def Leppard's new record! You're the best friend a guy could have. Hey, you guys got Harry the Happy Clown, too. You know him? Yeah. I thought he was still in prison. Oh, <laughs> Don, it's your turn. Don? Laura? I like it. But it's new. I know. I said I like it. Are you sure you like it, Milton? 
Yeah, you're Bob. Bob. No. Louise, so good to see us. Excuse me, Jupal. What do you what do you think of my dress? It's uh, very nice. Thank you, Bob. When you get a chance, you can send out Japan. Why do you want to see Geppetto? I want to see what he thinks of my dress. Of course. If you need anything, just call. Uh, let's see what's on the menu. Wait, Louise, before we look at the menus, how long have we been seeing each other? I don't know, six, seven years. What's the difference? Hello, everybody! Hey! Oh, just fine, Geppetto. We're celebrating. Our son, Huey, just graduated from seminary. He's going to be a full-fledged priest now. Ah, uh, Mom, quit it. Oh, son, you should be proud. Not many boys become priests. Oh, and Grace has some good news, too. She just came back from the dentist. Look, Geppetto, no cowardice. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Spaghetti for the Websters. Amir, Luis, how is Excuse it tonight? Excuse me, Geppetto, what do you think of my dress? Oh, I... Dress. Oh, it's very nice. And, and what about my hair? Oh, I... It's my hair, isn't it? I knew it. Milk, I'm going to the bathroom. Uh, she's a little bit dark tonight, eh? Yeah, she kind of is. But that's okay. See, tonight's kind of special. I'm, I'm going to ask Louise to marry me, and I'd like... Oh, to... he's a going to propose! Oh, that's fabulous. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. I'm like a a very spaghetti for this mess. We are celebrating this. You see, you come to Juventus, and everything will... Watch on me. I am the master. Excuse me, miss. Uh, how is your spaghetti? Well, I think it might be a little undercooked. Oh, these are done. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, how is the spaghetti? I, I don't know. I have the bottom of the line. He looks. He grows. It's a dot. Goes the also. Someone. These people need a more spaghetti. Excuse me, could I get some service? Uh, yes, may I help you? Ah, uh, yes. DW Ready Cab is here. Yeah. Oh? DW Ready Cab. So? What do you mean, so? Why are you here? Geppetto Hyatt. We already have plenty of waiters. I'm not I make commercials. So? Get your pedal. Roscoe, where's the crew? Oh! Excuse me, miss, can I get some pepper, please? <laughs> you want some? Oh. Indeed I do, indeed I do. When we shoot you today... Oh, today? Uh, the, but uh, we will bother all the customers. I thought we do shoot it on Sunday. No, can do, Geppetto. I've got weddings to film on Sunday. But, and also I wanted to shoot this place as though it were a Mexican restaurant. What are you talking about? This is Italian. Trust me, kid, we've got the star of the show right here in a truck full of props. Miss Lolita Bonita. Roscoe, where is Lolita? Oh! <laughs> Look over your script and we'll do the shooting just a bit. Oh, what is this about dancing tacos and limbo company? We have not that. But oh, trust me, you'll feel much better once we put you in a sombrero. Oh. Hey. <coughs> you call Dick Stoy me this? Oh, yes, we have a horrible problem with bugs in the basement. <gasps> I mean. Uh, su sun's in the place, Matt. Oh. Hey, don't worry about it. It's as good as done. Hey, I located the problem. The very, very large colony of insects. Yep, right under this table. All right, then. I'm going to go to the 
the trap. that America should be proud of. Dancing tacos, limbo companies, please! Dancing tacos! Alright, stop! Everybody just stop, okay? I'm gonna do what I came here to do and I'd like everyone to be very, very quiet. Louise, I'm proposing to you. Will you marry me? What, right here? Well, yeah. It's for all these people? Yeah. yeah. Well, let alone, you know it's now. Oh, come on, Louise! All right, yes, I'll do my I can perform the ceremony whenever you 
you're ready. Mobile! Yes! Yes! That's just what I want! If we could do it one more time with the same energy, it'll be lovely! Roll camera! Oh, the restaurant! Oh, cut! Cut! Wait! The pot in the basement! Hit! Huge!
Now, in the final minutes of this broadcast, I, Geraldo Rivera, will open these vaults that have been sealed for nearly three decades. Yes, in a few short seconds, I'll open Merv Griffin's vault. We're ready. Good morning and welcome to the Oprah Winfrey Show. Today, today we address a very serious topic, cross-dressing. Where does it start, how does it begin, and what impact will it have on our children? All very important issues, but what are they like for dinner? Today's show is favorite recipes of cross-dressers. <laughs> to my right is Frank. Now, Frank is a cross-dresser of Naperville. Hi, Frank. Hello, Oprah. Now, Frank has suffered much persecution over the years due to his cross-dressing habits. But Frank, what about chicken? Well, Oprah, I'm partial to the French chicken La Ronde. I baste it, then bake it for about 30 minutes, and by the time the family's at the table, I have a meal. That is wonderful, Frank. Next to Frank is Ron. Now, Ron is a cross-dresser from Wakanda. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. Now, Ron, you say that after four years of marriage, your wife divorced you due to your cross-dressing habits. Is that correct? Well, well, yes. Okay, now, Ron, I'm gonna ask you a little question, and it might seem a little sensitive, but... Ron, when you have a party of six coming over in 15 minutes, what type of appetizer do you prepare? Well, that's an easy one, Oprah. They're your friends. You want to be casual. So you take some tortilla chips, put them in a basket, spread some cheese over them, and you're south of the border. Ron, that is a revelation. <laughs> oh, we do have a question from the studio audience. Go right ahead. Yeah, I'm, pro I'm Professor Timothy Larry. I read your book, How to Prepare Dessert, while wearing something slinky, and I have a story of my own to tell. Two years ago, I found my husband trying on one of my new skirts. Take it slow, take it slow. <laughs> Shortly after, we were divorced. So my question is, Larry, when your chocolate mousse just doesn't flow, what do you do? Well, that's a question I've been asked many times, and I think I can help. Just put it in the refrigerator about five minutes before serving, and your problems should be solved. Larry, that is a very wonderful answer to a very brilliant question. Thank you. Moving on, cross-dresser number four, who has chosen to remain anonymous, has a splendid idea for Sunday morning pancakes. Oh, cross-dresser number four. That's right, Oprah. A revolutionary idea. You must knead the pancake batter until it has the consistency of molasses. Cross-dresser number four, that is amazing. Oh, we do have a call on line nine. Caller number one, you're on the air. Caller number one. Yes, I have a question for cross-dresser number four. Go right ahead, caller number one. Bill? Bill, is that you? Honey, what are you doing? It is you, it is you. Oh, oh honey, how could you do this I to me? I got my dress, oh, Bill. Oh, oh no. Oh, God. We'll be back after this commercial break in a minute. <laughs> God, what a dull party. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hey, wait, guys. I got this red in the mail yesterday. hits of all time recorded backwards with all the satanic messages digitally enhanced. Take a listen. How much is that doggy in the window by Rosemary Clooney? smash hits with all the satanic messages digitally enhanced. Mortimer, this is great. Can I borrow it? No, my brother, you must buy one for yourself. Well, how do we get one? <laughs> Just send a $14.95 check or money order to Swingin' with Satan, 1600 Dodge Avenue, Evanston, 60204. <laughs> and we're back with a completely different panel and different question. <laughs> Recently reunited twins, and have they eventually chosen the same profession? Let's find out. Susie and Jane are recently reunited twins who are separated at birth and grew up with different families due to a blunder at the hospital. They didn't see each other until last week when they discovered that they were dating the same man and working at the same zoo. Yes, Susie and Jane are twins reunited. Yes. 
Cobra. And today, we brought you something very special from the zoo. Yes, it's a rare Brazilian fish, and there are only six known to exist in the world. Right, and if everyone could be very quiet, we'll bring it out. Uh, Susie, didn't you put water in the box? No, why? <laughs> Moving on. Our next set of twins, Chris and Melinda, were separated at a New York City orphanage and didn't see each other until last week when they discovered that they were working at the same city hospital. That's correct, Oprah. And it has been proven through careful research that the psyches of twins, although they have been separated, are quite identical. That is interesting, Melinda. But Chris, the question that we all want answered is, are twins better lovers? Uh. I'm not really sure. Well, oh, we do have another question from the studio audience, Well, Yeah, I read the book you two co-authored and have a story around the show. Two years ago, I was separated from my twin sister Dorothy from Texas, Kansas. Pam? Yeah? Is that you? Dorothy? Yeah. Oh. oh, this is touching. <laughs> However, we do have two more guests. William and Beth Hopper are recently reunited twins who have Oprah, 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 yes. Oprah, yes. Oprah, 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 Oprah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, this has been very educational. But we've got a hell of a cast while here and we just love to talk about it. Yes, it's a tuna. And you know, after a long day of work, you still want to make your twins something special. Do you top that with breadcrumbs? No, we'll be back after this commercial break. No, breadcrumbs. No, my breadcrumbs is dead man. This fall, there's one concert to see. Not Prince, not Springsteen, not Celebrating Tomato Seeds. The concert to see is the Cosby, Stills, and Nash reunion tour. I feed my children Jello Grand Jellybean Pops, and I say, I'm Roger Ebert. <laughs> Join us next time on At The Movies when we'll review for you that wonderful new concert film by the group Salivating Tomato Seeds entitled What's Up Next and Sit On It. <laughs> wonderful? That's not in the script. Who said it was wonderful? I said it was wonderful. It was a great movie. <laughs> It was garbage, Roger. It was worse than nothing. I don't have enough thumbs to tell you how bad it is. What do you know? You thought that Howard the Duck was a film classic. Well, your favorite movie is Teen Wolf Part Two. We'll also greet you some clips from Cher's new film, Sunstroke. And we'll be reviewing Rape That Puppy, a new movie starring Roger and myself. Oh, Rape That Puppy was a thoroughly entertaining film, Gene, except I feel that Gene Siskel was overshadowed by Roger Ebert's incredible acting performance. What you really mean is that Gene Siskel was overshadowed by Roger Ebert's incredible bulk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget tonight, after the after school special, at the movies. again with a completely different panel and different question. In these last few, min few minutes of our program, we're here to decide, are there any more intelligent men left for women to date? <laughs> Let's find out. Dr. S doc Dr. Smith. Huh? Dr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Kellogg. Uh. A resounding no. <laughs> Tomorrow on the Oprah Winfrey Show, when our topic will be women who love men and men who can't love them, tomorrow at 9. <laughs> September 1988, Seoul, South Korea. The world came together for a few short weeks demonstrate their talents and feats of athletic skill. And yet, some athletes could not join in, for Seoul was not equipped with the facilities for all events. 
the remaining athletes have now gathered in the country far better prepared. Yamo presents the Fall Olympics in Guam. Hello and welcome to the 88 Fall Olympics in Guam. I'm Hank Finger and this afternoon we'll be bringing you what could be the gold clinching events, including the final round of synchronized swimming. But how knowledgeable is the rest of the world of these games in Guam? You be the judge as we go to Out on the Street interviews. This is Brian O'Shaughnessy reporting in America. Excuse me, sir, what is your view of the 88 Fall Olympics in Guam? Olympics in Guam? <laughs> Brian, we are live outside of Guam Memorial Stadium, which overlooks the majestic peak of Guam Memorial Mountain. Ah, sir, what is your opinion about the Fall Olympics in Guam? I, I, oh, I am very excited about the Fall Olympics in Gu Guam. Oh, Guam, Guam. As you can see, the people of Guam are ablaze with excitement and anticipation of the first event, sponsored by Dr. Scholes, the official art support of the 88 Olympics. Now live Brian, who's wearing the official sports jacket of the 88 Olympics. Thank you, Penelope. We're live here at the Hall Calling Range in the outskirts of Guam. The contestants are doing their warm-ups. So Olympics in Guam. Just a few seconds ago in Guam Memorial Arena, the boxing championships began. These two athletes are going for the gold, but this is no ordinary boxing event. No, because both fighters are nuns. Let's get up close and personal with the American competitor, Sister Mary. We went to the official Philadelphia convent of the AD and Olympics and met up with her after four hours of intense play. Sister Mary really likes to hit the bag. Come on, Mary. Harder, harder. Want it. Want it, Mary. Her trainer, Father Xavier, our theme show, caps for the gold. Father! Uh, call me Xavier. Why is this nun better than the rest? Well, quite frankly, Sister Mary has the best form of any nun I've ever seen. Come here, Mary. Flex. Oh, look at those biceps. <laughs> yes! Mary, your comments before the big fight. God willing, I'll last the five rounds, and hopefully I'll come out the victor. Well, good luck to both of you. Now back to Brian at the hog calling range. Well, hey, we're here to bid our competition and have a hog inside. Excuse me, Mr. Referee. Yes. There seems to be a problem with getting the hogs to respond to the calls. Uh, well, I didn't have the heart to tell them, but there are no hogs in Guam. No hogs in Guam? I'm not worrying, we are airlifting hogs from Missouri. Well, we'll see if the ref can bring home the bacon. But now, if Penelope Horton is with the chicken coop, go ahead a winning lose team from Sweden. Really? Yes, it's true. The dynamic duo, Inga and Binga Swinson, once again, owned the chicken coop luge and won the gold. How does it feel to be the big losers, Binga? Be a man, losers, be a winners. No, Binga, you... Oh. oh, well. Inga, do you feel that this run was better than your trial run? Y'all? Yeah. Well, how so? Y'all? Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Y'all? Yeah. Unusual event. We are chicken coop and feeding. We get all the loose, go down the shoes, and all the chickens go cluck, cluck, y'all. Sister Mary. Oh, Bell. I want him. I want him. Oh, Mike, I want you. <laughs> well, that's not all for the boxing arena. And now for the event that everyone's been waiting for, the ever suspenseful, ever popular, ever glamorous, synchronized swimming in Guam Memorial Natatorium. Now in the center pool, the team is going to perform their synchronized swimming routine. This capacity crowd has been waiting for this event since day one. 
scam's done. Pulled off another, and then you realize that we won. Smashing bottles and closing logs. At your mercy on our knees. Oh, oh, bunch of high school kids. You followed through with the list of characters we gave you. Uh, we did our best. And you continued our subplots so they came to a boiling, torpid conclusion. Oh, yeah, I guess so. This isn't bad. Not great, though. Where did you boys say you worked before? Well, we wrote a show once. Did it have a name? Yamo. Yamo? What is a Yamo? I never heard of Yamo. Look, people, this is gonna have to do. Burnett, run this down to the cast immediately. Sure, Lou. And now, another episode. 
episode of Rites of the Passage. Darling. Rip your home! Come here and let me love you. Oh, oh Rip, I'm so happy we're married again. When we were divorced that week in April, I was so down in the dumps. And then we're divorced that week in May, I... You don't need to think about that now. We have a family now, you, me, and our son, Brick. And that's the way it will stay forever. I'm leaving. I'm right there, Brick. Where do you think you're going? I don't know. Somewhere. Somewhere where I can have a, a purpose. Is it your drinking? Your gambling debt? Oh, come on, Mom. Don't treat me like a child. I'm 37. I don't need a housemaid. <laughs> I'm a rebel, Dad. Can't you accept that? Oh. oh, Rip, I don't know if I can face the guest tonight. Oh. Come in. Hey, sir. Ma'am. My name is Clement, and this here is my partner, Zeke. Ah, good evening. We're from the Nashville Institute for the Mentally Unstable or screwed up or something like that. That's right. We come to warn you. Your insane cousin, Ken Conrad, well, he done escape from our asylum. Oh my God, is he dangerous? No, not really. But I gotta warn you though, do not speak French in front of him. Now, if you do, he becomes the center of a big musical production. Now, I'll repeat, a big musical production. <laughs> That's right, Zeke, we've done our jobs now. We're looking for babes. babes. So, women, I need some more scrams. Yeah, make a Honey, that's some horrible news about your cousin. Why, it'd be a shame if anything would happen to you. And imagine finding all this out on the 20th anniversary of my childhood lover's disappearance. Come in. I wonder that can be. your dynasty to Eden tomorrow night at the big hospital benefit? Yes, Rip. After 50 years of managing the Vineyard dynasty, I've become tired and disillusioned. That's why I've decided to hand it all over to my daughter, Eden. Plus, I want to take up windsurfing with my lovely wife. Uh, well, Breeze, you look absolutely radiant. Well, I have some wonderful news. You oh, she's pregnant. We can have a baby. Oh. Congratulations, well, this love. Is also wonderful. Let's sit down to dinner. Which plane went down over the Arctic Circle during the nuclear test? The one who was raised, loved, and tutored by the penguins? <laughs> it could be the same one. It is the same one. <gasps> If we don't get her to a hospital soon, she might die. <laughs> so, Doctor, you will order the penicillin tomorrow. Yes, Doctor. Very good. So, is it time for the meeting? What meeting? Uh, the refreshment committee for the hospital benefit. Oh, well, I'll be gone. You fool! If anyone was to find out that we doctors were part of the evil conspiracy, all of our work would have been in vain. Oh, all right. By the way, what are the iguanas? The iguanas are the international group united against nice Americans. Now let's go! Order of the iguanas, come to order. You will say with me now the pledge of the iguana. Iguana, iguana, so scary and green, assist us in evil and nefarious deeds. You sit on a rock. We are sheep of your flock. Make us dastardly, godly and mean. Very good. And now the salute of the iguana. Is there any other business? Yes. What is on the agenda for the week? 
This week, we are going to drive Eden Core, daughter of Vineyard Dynasty Tycoon Crash Montgomery, insane. Insane? That sounds pretty evil. But why do it? So that her husband and fellow iguana member, Rip, will inherit the Vineyard Dynasty and we can finance our evil doings. Now, Benito and Eva are exchange iguanas from Latvia will repeat their mission. <laughs> we will pose as maid and butler. And drive Eden God to the brink of madness. Very good. And then at the benefit, we shall push her over the brink. And be on the lookout for Eden's evil cousin, Cat. Cat? Why? Is he dangerous? No. But something very strange happens to him whenever you speak French in front of him. But he's one of us. And at the hospital benefit Wait tomorrow a second. night. Hospital benefit? What hospital benefit? It's not really a hospital benefit, okay? It's to raise money for the iguanas, all right? Now listen up. Is there anything else? Yes. Our next meeting will take place at Rip's house. Boris, you bring the dip. Skyler, the checks knit. Chuck's mix. Help! 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 Is there anything wrong? They took Rip's wife, Eden, into pre -op. They told us to come find a surgeon. We don't have much time to lose. How is she? Grave, Rip. Very, very grave. But of course, you know, if Eden dies on the operating table, we will inherit the Vineyard Dynasty. I'm going to put Skylar on it. He's one of our finest surgeons. Thank you. You know, I've got a few moments about to go in and operate. Is anyone up for coffee in the cafeteria? But doctor, you must go into pre-op. Oh, pre-op, smear-op. Let's go get a cappuccino. <laughs> I'll do the operation myself. Don't worry. She can't perform the operation. She's not in Iguana. She might save her. Oh, Uncle Rip, Marcy and I were just finishing up our work, our volunteer work at the, in pediatrics when we heard the news. Well, actually, Ted, your Aunt Eden just went into a coma. Her chances of survival, they're very, very slim right now. I feel wonderful! <gasps> oh, Aunt Eden, we were so worried. Oh, there was nothing to worry about, kids. Why don't you just run along? Oh, no, we want to feel useful. Isn't there something we can do to help? Oh, well, yeah. Can we clean up the operating room? Uh, well, okay, kids, but stay away from the liposuction machine. <laughs> Honey, I'm so glad you're feeling all right. It's my cousin Cat! No, no, not the same cousin Cat that breaks out into a big musical production whenever you speak French in front of me. Oh, well, I guess it's just a strange coincidence. Honey, don't worry about dinner tonight. I've made reservations at the bird. Oh, c'est si bon, mon chéri. Good afternoon. I'm Troy. This is my partner, Lisa. How you doing? We're FBI. We've just received a tip off that a call known as the Order of the Iguana is shipping arms through this hospital. Would you know anything about it? <laughs> hey! What are you doing? In the linen closet. <laughs> as you were saying, We've heard from a very reliable source that this is the rendezvous point for a huge arms shipment. Know anything about it? Sign here, ma'am. All hail the iguana. <laughs> no, nothing at all. Well, listen, honey. If you see anything, keep your eyes open, OK? succeed in their evil scheme to drive Eden Court insane? Will Rip go to the dark side? Will Benito and Eva inherit the vin... No, that's not right. That's Eden. And what about Zeke and Clem? What about them?
But more importantly, will Skylar remember the checks mix? Find out as Rites of Passage continues. Eden, it seems you are recovering quite well, and yet I'd feel better knowing you had some help around the house. So let me just introduce your new butler, Benito, and Eva, your new maid. Hello, madam. Hello. <laughs> nice so just rest up, and I'll see you for your next appointment at the hospital. <laughs> well, I think I'll go make the bed. I've done that, madam. Well, maybe I'll go weed the garden. I've done that, madam. Well, maybe I'll go pick some flowers. I've done that, madam. Well, maybe I'll go up on a hill and paint a landscape. Madam, I've done that. <laughs> Hi, Mom. I'm home. Oh, Rick! Rick. Oh, whatever. I'm just so happy. <laughs> well, in the time, my, my, my running away wasn't a complete waste. I got a degree in medicine, and I started the hospital next week. I'm so proud of you, son. I'll be in my room, Ma. Uh... Now, honey, you sure you're feeling all right? Well, I think so. Well, we'll just stop by at the hospital later today and have some tests taken. Benito, Evo, why don't you take her outside and get her some fresh air? Oh, I don't really feel like going outside. Oh, okay. Good afternoon. I'm Troy. This is my partner, Lisa. We're FBI. Mind if we come in? No, please. As you might know, Mr. Kaur, there's an investigation going on at the hospital regarding the order you want to call. Would you know anything about their actions? Well, meeting's in the basement, right, Red? Uh, yeah, I'll be down in a sec. Okay. <laughs> I wish I could help you, but I'm as much in the dark as you two. Well, if you see anything suspicious, keep it under your hat. Glad to be of service. <laughs> Everything is going according to plan. She is becoming more and more disoriented every day. She will go over the edge at the hospital benefits. Now, honey, you sure you're feeling all right? Well, I'm incredibly hungry, but you do that to me. Eden, so good to see you again. I heard you weren't feeling so well. So we're just going to conduct a simple little test. Tell me if you see or hear anything a little Strange. <laughs> what are you doing with this fast gun? What were those jazzy tacos and what was that horrible music? No! Forget it! Go home! Rip! Doctor! Has been has Rip been acting a little strange lately? No, not at all. I'd give my gold card to find out what's really going on here. You must push her closer to the limit. Otherwise, she will not go over the edge of the party tonight, and we will not get our hands on that vineyard dynasty. All our evil deeds will have been in vain. I got to Dr. Deschardinay, but I plan on having Benito, Eva, and her evil cousin Kat at the party also. <laughs> Kids, what are you doing here? Well, we finished up our volunteer work at the soup kitchen. And we thought we'd come down and help out in the geriatrics oh, ward. Yeah, well, I've got to do some work at the shelter, Ted, so I'd better be going. Kids! Call me old-fashioned, but I don't think kissing is necessary. Why don't you just give each other a high five? No, wasn't that better? And as for you, honey, I have to get you home and ready for the benefit tonight. happen at the hospital benefit? Will Bluff and Breeze first a bouncing baby boy before the benefit? Will Clay come back into the picture? Will his checkered past with the penguins catch up with him? And what about Big Louie? What about him? There is no Big Louie. And finally, will anyone else speak French in front of Cat? Let's hope not. And now, the startling conclusion of Rites of Passage. Just a few more 
flowers here, and then we'll hand over all the responsibilities of the vineyard to our daughter, Edie. And just imagine, 50 years ago, I started out with one grape, and look what I have now. It makes me feel woozy, too, dear. Crash! Hey, Nettie! You ain't heard nothing from your evil nephew, cat, have you? No. What are you two boys doing here? Looking for babes? Babes? Who wants us women this way? Yeah, yeah, now. OK, everyone. We're just about $5,000 short of the goal for the evening. This is a fun that has oh, nothing at all to do with the iguanas. Nothing at all. It's for uh, the kids. So just give your money to the fun that has nothing at all to do with the iguanas. Thanks. Good evening. We're FBI. We just wanted to alert you that there may be iguana infiltrators at this event. So why don't you tell us, okay? We will. Hmm. You know, I'm a sucker for these benefits. Here's a hundred for the time. Thanks. Mom! Dad! Oh, my mom! Dad, I can't tell you how thrilled I am you're giving me the keys to that grape vineyard tonight. It's a boy! It's a boy! Ah! <laughs> Note this, my fellow iguanas. Eden, you look thirsty. Have a drink. Oh, well, Eden, hold the baby. Oh, this baby's so cute. Rip, you hold my drink. Now what will happen after the drug takes effect is she will act like a chicken for exactly 30 seconds, and everyone will be convinced that she is insane. Rip, what's happening? I'll tell you what's going on. Rip works for the Order of the Iguana. But, Mom! We're not your mom or dad. We're FBI. We've been here since the beginning. But if you're not my parents, who are? Actually, honey, uh, we are. But I don't understand any of this. Tell her about it, son. <laughs> I never loved you. <gasps> I only married you for them vineyards. Besides, I was always married to your maid, Eva. <gasps> oh, darling. But I divorced her this morning. <sighs> now I shall marry the woman I've always loved. Kate. Kate! Who's Kate? Kate. 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 So, uh, what's happening? Oh, hey. Kate, Kate, they know. The whole world knows. Oh, Rip, at least we can spend the rest of our lives together. Guess again, Cookie. Your man's going up the river for a long, long time. Au revoir, mon chéri. Oh, I don't oh. speak French, you from them. Are you all right? I rushed over as soon as I heard and had my hair done. You missed everything, Clay. Can you still love me? I'll always love you. Oh. Well, we'll take these hooligans down the house if you don't mind. We've raised $30,000 for the cult. Oh. 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 As the new chief of staff at Memorial Hospital, I'm putting this money towards a new wing at the hospital devoted to the study of penguins. <laughs> so, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, on the last leg of his 12-continent tour, Mr. Bobby 